Facebook. Is it worth $100 billion? Should it be valued at Zuckerberg's challenge was to show investors and advertisers the profit that could be made from Facebook's most valuable asset, the personal data it had on its users. Mark, great as he was at vision and product, he had very little experience in building a big advertising business. That would be the job of Zuckerberg's deputy, Sheryl Sandberg, who'd done the same for Google. At Facebook, we have a broad mission. We want to make the world more open and connected. The business model we see today was created by Sheryl Sandberg and the team she built at Facebook, many of whom had been with her at Google. Publicly, Sandberg and Zuckerberg had been downplaying the extent of the personal data Facebook was collecting and emphasizing users' privacy. We are focused on privacy. We care the most about privacy. Our business model is by far the most privacy-friendly to consumers. That's our mission, right? I mean, we, we have to do that because um, if people feel like they don't have control over how they're sharing things, then then we're failing them. It really is the point that the only things Facebook knows about you are things you've done and told us. But internally, Sandberg would soon lead Facebook in a very different direction. There was a meeting, I think it was in March of 2012, in which, you know, it was everyone who built stuff inside ads, myself among them. And, you know, she basically recited the reality, which is revenue was flattening. It wasn't slow, it wasn't declining, but it wasn't growing nearly as fast as investors would have guessed. So she basically said, like, we have to do something. You people have to do something. And so there was a big effort to basically pull out all the stops and start experimenting way more aggressively. The reality is that, yeah, Facebook has a lot of personal data, uh, your chat with your girlfriend or boyfriend, uh, your drunk party photos from college, et cetera. The reality is that none of that is actually valuable to any marketer. <laughs> they want commercially interesting data. You know, what products did you take off the shelf at Best Buy? What did you buy in your last grocery run? Did it include diapers? Do you have kids? Are you head of household? Right? It's things like that, things that exist in the outside world that just do not exist inside Facebook at all. Sandberg's team started developing new ways to collect personal data from users wherever they went on the internet and when they weren't on the internet at all. And so there's this extraordinary thing that happens that doesn't get much attention at the time, uh, about four or five months before the IPO, and the company announces its first uh, relationship with data broker companies, companies that most Americans aren't at all aware of, that go out and buy up data about each and every one of us, what we buy, where we shop, where we live, what our traffic patterns are, what our families are doing, what our likes are, what magazines we read, data that the consumer doesn't even know that's being collected about them because it's being collected from the rest of their lives by companies they don't know. And it's now being shared with Facebook so that Facebook can target ads back to the user. What Facebook does is profile you. If you're on Facebook, it's collecting everything you do. If you're off Facebook, it's using tracking pixels to collect what you're browsing. And for its micro-targeting to work, for its business model to work, it has to remain a surveillance machine. They made a product that was a better tool for advertisers than anything that had ever come before.